Hi Trinity friends, welcome back to the Christmas mystery. We are ready to start the 10th of December. Yesterday, um, Joya Kim had been reading about, uh, they're, in, they're in Germany now, and Ethereal had told Elizabeth the story of the Pied Piper of Hamelin and how they had broken their solemn promise and so he'd come back from their children. And that was a sad thing. Then he and Mama had gone to the market and Mama couldn't believe that they were standing in such terribly cold conditions. What did she say here? I wonder how they can bear to stand here in the middle of the winter. There's someone over there selling flowers too. And of course, we know that that was John. And anyway, uh, John was standing behind a table with lots of flowers on it. He winked at Joya Kim and gave a little wave. When they had passed, Joy Kim turned around. John was pretending to play on an invisible pipe. So John knew what he had read that morning, didn't he? So today is the 10th of December. And today we have um, a tower, a town, maybe it's from the town hall, um, or, or a church tower maybe. There is a clock in it and an, an angel. Now, whether that's ethereal or another angel, I don't know. Um, here it is in color, okay? There are that same pictures in color. And I guess while we're back there, there's Hanover and the other shepherd and the other sheep. It was a church tower, right? And sailing across the water and then all the way back to the beginning of the story. And we still have those stories to get through. Anyway, that's today. So either it is ethereal, or we might be getting another angel. Let's read and find out. The 10th of December. <clears throat> a few seconds later, what Elizabeth had thought was a bird took off and flew down in a spiral toward the pilgrims. So that's part of today's story. Joachim woke up and opened the tenth door in the magic advent calendar. Today there was a picture of an angel at the top of a church tower. Out of the, out of the calendar fell a scrap of paper, folded over and over. Joachim unfolded it and began to read. Imperial. It happened at Paderborn at the end of the 13th century. Into the little town, halfway between Hanover and Cologne, rushed a frisky flock of sheep, followed by two shepherds, a black king, a little girl, and an angel with wings outspread. It was early in the morning before the town was awake. Only a night watchman was out in the streets. He called out sternly to the two shepherds who were chasing their flock of sheep through the town. The next moment, he caught sight of the angel hovering above the cobblestones. Then he raised his arms to the sunrise and exclaimed, Alleluia! Alleluia! Whereupon he retreated around a corner and left the streets to the godly procession. They stopped in front of a church in the middle of the town. That's St. Bartholomew's Church, said Ethereal. It was built in the 11th century and is called after one of Jesus' 12 apostles. It is told of Bartholomew that he journeyed all the way to India to tell the Indians about Jesus. Elizabeth had noticed something strange. She pointed up at the spire on the church tower. There's, there's a white bird sitting up there, she said. If the, if the ethereal smiled, oh, if only there was, he said. A few seconds later, what Elizabeth had thought was a bird took off and flew down in a spiral towards the pilgrims. 
she realized that the bird wasn't a bird at all. What had been sitting on the church spire was an angel. But it was not a grown angel. It was no larger than she was herself. The child angel alighted at Elizabeth's feet. Wonderful, he exclaimed. My name is Imperial and I'm coming with you to Bethlehem. He whirled around a bit, peered up at Casper and the two shepherds, then looked up at Ethereal and said, I've been waiting for a quarter of an eternity. I didn't know you could count eternity to get a quarter of it. <laughs> I've been waiting for a quarter of an eternity. Casper stood thinking. It was obvious he had something on his mind. Oh, I think it's what I was thinking. A quarter of an eternity, he began. That's about 66,289 years, or about 156,498 years, or more exactly, 439,811,977 years and four seconds, or perhaps mm, even a little more. It's not easy to say how long a quarter of an eternity lasts. First, you have to find out how long a whole eternity lasts. Then you have to divide it by four. But exactly how long a whole eternity lasts is very difficult to calculate. No matter which number you start with, eternity will last even longer. So one can say that a quarter of an eternity is really just as long as the whole eternity even a thousandth of an, of an eternity, Jay, is really just as long as the whole of the rest of eternity. This is extremely difficult to understand, for calculating whole or half eternities is a matter for heaven above. The angel imperial looked offended. But I've been sitting on top of the church tower for hours he said. Very possibly, but that's not the same as sitting there for a quarter of an eternity, said Caspar. To avoid a quarrel between the wise man and the cherub, and not just a quarter of a quarrel, Joshua struck the cobblestones with his crook and said, to Bethlehem, to Bethlehem, I hope you're saying that with me. They set off through the town and out along the roads and cattle trails. Imperial sprang in front of the five sheep, so the pilgrimage was guarded by angels at both ends. They saw many towns and villages, but didn't stop until they came to the old Roman city of Cologne on the bank of the Rhine River. Ethereal had explained that their route through Europe had been planned so that they should be seen by as few people as possible. Angel Time says it's 1,272 years after Christ, he said. They've begun building a great cathedral of Cologne, but it won't be finished for hundreds of years yet. Joshua banged his crook to Bethlehem, to Bethlehem. Imperial said, glorious countryside, isn't it? We're going up the Rhine River. There are fortresses and castles, steep vineyards and Gothic cathedrals, dandelions and rhubarb. <laughs> okay. They hurried along the bank of the biggest river Elizabeth had ever seen. The valley became narrower and narrower, and the mountains higher and higher. They ran past small towns and villages. Out on the river floated an occasional barge. As they sped through the beautiful landscape, Elizabeth turned towards Ethereal and asked whether he had met Imperial before. 
All the angels in heaven have known each other through all eternity, said Ethereal, laughing. Are there an awful lot of you then? Oh, yes, a whole host. How? How can you all know each other then? <clears throat> We've had the whole of eternity to get to know each other. And you see, that's a very long time. Elizabeth had to think hard so as to understand what Ethereal meant. The angel explained a little bit more. If you have a party that lasts for three hours, you shouldn't invite more than five or six guests, and then everyone will be able to talk to everyone else. But if the party lasts for three whole days, you can easily have 50 or more guests. Elizabeth nodded. She had discussed this with Mama when it was her birthday. So, she asked, the heavenly party has lasted for all of eternity, said Ethereal. Do, do all the angels have different names? Oh, well, of course. Otherwise, we couldn't call out to each other. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been persons. E we wouldn't have been persons either. And Ethereal began to say all the angel names, one after the other. The angels in heaven are called Ariel, Biariel, Crucerial, Daniel, Ethereal, Fabio, Gabriel, Hamariel, um, Emmanuel, uh, Joachiel, uh, Chachadriel, Luxuriel, Michael, Nariel. That's enough, said Elizabeth. How long would it take you to say all the angel names? Oh, I would have to go on for all of eternity. Oh, maybe it's a good thing she had him stop. That's pretty good going to remember all the names by heart, said Elizabeth. With all of eternity at your disposal, it's not so difficult. And I think it's very clever to think up so many different names, all ending in L. Elizabeth went on. Ethereal nodded. God's imagination is infinite, just as there are infinitely many stars in the sky. No angel is exactly like another, nor are humans either. You can make a thousand identical machines, but they are so easy to make that even a human can do that. Finally, the angel of Furiel spoke some words that Elizabeth hid in her heart. Every person on earth is a unique work of creation. I'll say amen to that. Every person on earth is a unique work of creation. Joey Kim sat smiling to himself. It had been such fun to read about all the angels. Suddenly, he heard Mama on the landing. He didn't have time to hide the paper in the secret box, so he slipped it under his pillow. Mama leaned over the bed to peep in the calendar. An angel, she said, on a church tower. And then... Something stupid happened. Joy Kim forgot that he wasn't supposed to talk about what he had read. Oh, this boy. Perhaps it was because he was trying to remember all those strange angel names. He said, that's the cherub imperial. Mama stared at him. Imperial? Joy Kim nodded. He thought it was a nice name for a mischievous angel, so nice that he kept repeating it inside himself. He's sitting on the top of St. Bartholomew's church. He's been sitting there for a quarter of an eternity, but now he's about to take off and fly in a spiral down to Elizabeth and the others. 
Mama didn't answer Joachim. Instead, she called for Papa. <clears throat> when he came into the room, she asked Joachim to tell him what the church in the picture was called. St. Bartholomew's Church, he said. Bartholomew went all the way to India and told the Indians about Jesus, but the church is in Germany, in Paderburg or something, somewhere. Mama and Papa stood staring at each other. Ah, uh, I'll look that up in the encyclopedia, said Papa. Then we'll find out. When he came back, he looked like a ghost or at least as if he had met an angel or two on the landing. He, he's quite right. The town's name, the town's called Paderborn, and there really is an old St. Bartholomew's church there. They were gazing at Joya Kim just as they had done last year when he ate nearly all the little Christmas cookies the day before Christmas Eve. Papa took the magic advent calendar down from the wall and inspected it on both sides. Then he hung it up again. And how did you hear about Bartholomew, my lad? Asked Papa. Or about Paderborn, for that matter? At school, said Joya Kim. And you're telling the truth? Either you were allowed to tell lies about Christmas presents, or you weren't. Yes, whispered Joya Kim. Then they all ran out of time, so there was no more talk of Bartholomew, Imperial, or Paderborn. Neither Mama nor Papa had time to make their sandwiches for lunch. Joy Kim's most important victory that morning was that he managed to hide the little piece of paper in his secret box before he ran off to school. He hid the key in the bookshelf. When he came home from school, Mama was there. She had, she had opened his secret box. That means she must have found the key. That means she must have gone looking for it. <clears throat> She had opened his secret box. Mama had done something she had promised she would never do. She had broken a solemn promise. She had done something that was as bad as opening other people's letters. On the dining room table lay all ten pieces of paper that Joachim had found in the magic advent calendar. He was furious. He was so angry with Mama that he wanted to hit her. You, you promised me that the secret box was mine and that you'd never open it. So you tell lies and you steal too? Then Papa came home. He had talked to Mama on the phone. It was he who had said she should try to find the key and open the secret box. They had to find out how Joya Kim knew so many strange names and used so many grown-up words. Joya Kim said they shouldn't be, have been allowed to have children, for people who tell lies to their children might suddenly begin to hit them as well. And that was against the law. They could at least have waited until he came home from school and asked if they could open his box. Finally, he managed to say that he had hidden the scraps of paper because he wanted to pack them up and give them to Mama and Papa for Christmas. He said that he'd thrown away the whole of the magic advent calendar. And then he began to cry. He rushed into his room and slammed the door behind him as hard as he could. 
He was never going to forgive them. He would never listen to them anymore either. He would never believe them again. Never. <sighs> Joy Akim sat on his bed and tried to look up at the magic advent calendar. But his eyes were so wet that the colors slid into one another and he could no longer pick out the angels from the shepherds in the fields. Everything was spoiled. The advent calendar had suddenly become ordinary, like every other advent calendar. It wasn't the least bit magical anymore. After a long time, something began to sing in his ears. And the song he heard was something like, Sabet to bass, sabet to bass, sabet to bass. It was such a mysterious song that he suddenly realized that perhaps it didn't make any difference whether Mama and Papa knew about the scraps of paper in the Advent calendar or not. Perhaps, just perhaps, the magic Advent calendar was so full of secrets that there would be enough for the whole family. He had still not said that he had met John. That was something he had to himself. There was a quiet knock at the door. Joy Kim didn't answer. But after a little while, Papa cautiously opened the door. It's true, he said. We've been silly. Mama added, can you forgive us? Did you read what was on the secret pieces of paper? Asked Joy Kim. Well, I suppose I did said Mama. But you see, I don't know which piece of paper came out of the Advent calendar first. Maybe you could show us and perhaps read it all to Papa? Joy Kim considered carefully. All right then. He was a little relieved at what had happened, really. From now on, he had no need to hide anything anymore. And besides, he would be able to ask Mama and Papa if there was something that he didn't understand. From now on, the magic advent calendar would belong to the whole family. <clears throat> wow, I am so glad it ended that way. I was a little worried there for a while as Joy Kim got so mad and Mama was already at home and the box was open. This will make it easier for Joy Kim. That's true. Oh, looks like there's a, a night tomorrow, the 11th of the 11th of December. And it does. It looks like a night in armor. So... We kind of get to cheat a little bit. We kind of get to look at the picture before Joya Kim does. All right, you have a good rest of your day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye, friends.